Hey, it's all about quality, not about quantity, right? Let's get back to another round of Bruise Day Tuesday with Drez and Big Nate. I can't help but feel like it may have been a little bit about quantity for you this weekend. A lot of quantity. In fact, let me uh, calculate. I think I brought I brought a 30, 30 pack of PBR staple and then i brought just a bunch of craftiness i think i brought essentially another case worth of craftiness the, the pbr is there for for surviving well basically yeah yeah i mean that's the bread and stuff so i uh i think it, i think i ended up bringing about 50 beers and i think siegel brought even more than me if you can believe it not all of them got drank but uh pete was more of a He's more of a whiskey guy, so he brought a bunch of Cokes and Jameson. That's his thing. I think he ended up drinking about a half a handle of Jameson, along with, you know, stuff here and there. Like course, I, but... I'd be fine with the whiskey straight, but that, I'm, as someone who drinks a lot of cola, but in the hot sun all day, that would kill me. Well, no, well, that's... Yeah, a, hang on. You just never the, stop. It's a mixed drink. You know, it's not just whiskey straight. I Although I did, and that was the only hard liquor. That was the difference. I learned that from last year. The only hard liquor I had the entire time was at one point he did pull, we buddied up our canoes and he handed me a shot. He's like, you want a shot of whiskey? I was like, all right, let's do it. I think that was early on on Saturday when we had still hadn't caught anything. It's just like, all right, here we go. But again, Saturday is when I did switch to the Bell's beers that have the fish on them. And it was indeed a good omen. In fact, it was this beer right here, the cold hearted IPA that was in my cup holder when I finally did catch uh, a good-sized bass. In fact, it was ended up being the biggest fish of the trip. It was right on a little bit of, not crazy rapids, but, you know, enough that there was a little bit of work. And that was the thing. Everybody kept saying, you know, you want to you fish the rapids, you want to yep. fish the rapids. The problem is, is I'm always, like, trying to safely get through them. Yeah, exactly. So, but finally, I was just like, you know what? When it comes to the little baby ones, I'm just going to flow. It'll be fine. And so I was casting and casting. Siegel and, and Pete were kind of buddied up behind me. And in hindsight, they even told me that they were like, they were just hanging out because no luck, whatever. And they're like, oh, well, Drez is still trying. He's still up there fishing. And thank goodness I was, man, because that was the big boy. It was, a, it was a smallmouth bass, but it was a good size. And that was the start of the fish flowing because that was right near the island we were going to set up at. So then we, we parked it, we set up camp and then started fishing again. I used that same lure. That's the other thing I switched, man. I switched to a lure that was bigger. I wasn't using them because in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to catch a fish big enough to try and yeah. eat this. Hindsight. I used that same lure. Cause I was like, all right, it worked. As soon as we got to the island, we set up stuff, and then I casted it out just a few more times, caught another bass. Smaller, same lure. And then, bam, all right, now we're going. Casting it out, move to the other side of the island. Oh, wouldn't you know it? I catch a little sucker fish with it. So I've come to the realization, and the sucker fish was maybe two or three times the size of the lure. So instead of thinking it of like, okay, fish are only going to eat fish that they can swallow in one bite. No, it's not like that. If yeah. the fish is bigger than the lure, they'll still just try and like nip at it or take a, take a bite out of it. Maybe get a chunk of a yeah, fin. Yeah, you can get that. And then that's, set. and then, yeah, then there you go. So. I don't so all of a sudden want fish. Yeah, right. Well, you got one right there in front of it's you. What's the, your fish? The change of heart. It's their experimental black IPA. And they really did like. So I was just kind of comparing the cans because we were cycle, try and save the cans and, and keep them intact uh, because we've learned if you crush them, you don't get your deposit back. Yes, that is true. <laughs> the, uh, all three of them have the Bells logo. All three of the other ones have the Bells logo with the like traditional, you know, you've got the three Bells and then the yellow. They really like changed everything on this one. You've got like, it's a teal in the logo and then it's a black background with the Bells. Uh, experimental black IPA. So we're going to do some science here with Bell's Brewing. It's 7.0. Oh, oh, yeah. My cold-hearted 
which is uh seven seven point oh as well. And I wonder if this is Bruton Can. Yeah, they don't have any of the little rundown there. But I don't I didn't know if it was not I guess it's cold, not cryo. That's where my mind initially went was if it might have been, but I don't know. It, it's Bells is one of those to me. I only know the beer because I like the beer and I enjoy their product, but their graphic design is just eh. You yeah, know, it's 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 iconic because it's so bad. <laughs> I'm particularly thinking of like the Oberon with that weird like drawn daisy. Um, but I feel like they just aren't afraid to try anything, and if it's good enough, it'll pass. That was another one. Is my uh, favorite Bell's bumper sticker is the uh, if uh, God wanted our beer filtered, He wouldn't have given us livers. Yeah, I think I've seen that once or twice. Written, so I think that was Benjamin Franklin that quote. That I think it's a Ben Maybe. Franklin quote. That sounds like something he would say. Yeah, um, notorious so, drunk. So, and I just I did just remember. So yeah, Incubus the first night, and then after that, when we got to the second island, there was zero service, zero service, which was great because you know it's kind of nice. You're just right there in the moment in the nature doing the thing. Can't check my phone. I can enjoy my time. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it'd be nice to be able to check stuff like the weather. That we'll we'll get weather to that be. eventually. Also, it would have been nice to have more music than just what was left on Seagull's True Thing. So we were listening to Jimmy Buffett. Oh God, none. That was pretty much the only option. Somehow, for a trip like that, though, that's not. He did that on. Purpose. It wasn't the worst. It wasn't the worst. But I, I think I'm good on Jimmy Buffett for a little while. I, Just saying. I agree. Um, what was he? Do you know what he was using for? A... I don't remember, but it wasn't even on his, like, saved his phone. It was a stream thing. Yeah. So whatever service. But I guess it was just like it still was there. And I was pissed because I looked and I was like, I could have sworn I had some of my old WVRU senior year sheezies on my See, phone. That would have been cool. And that would have been perfect. It would have been a great variety and also would have been, you know, Drez from, gosh, well, how long ago? Like 2008, 2009, yeah. uh, doing the radio thing, which would have been a trip and funny. But no, we this, had Jimmy Buffett. This is my thing. I was just having a discussion last week with JT about this. If you're going on a trip and you don't know what your service is going to be like, there are two things you should download absolutely every time. Um, if you use Spotify, I know a lot of people use Tidal. I think they both have the same feature. You can download playlists. So like you can build a playlist and download it. It'll store it locally on your phone as long as your subscription is active. You can listen to it if you don't have service. And maps. You can download the entire database. Like, like I've got it for the United States. You can download Google Maps. The maps. So like let's say you lose connection, you lose service. Mm -hmm. You've still got your GPS. Don't know how helpful that would have been on a canoe trip where the river basically goes one direction. Going, yeah, we we don't need the maps on that well, one. Where did the wise? You can Although it kind of was make stuff available. I think offline. I think Siegel was checking the maps periodically just to see how far we were from where our next takeout was, just to get an idea, you know, with all that. But yeah, so we we get to that we get to that island, we set up and I catch Another small bass. And then I can't remember if I caught my sucker fish next. I think so. I, no, no, no. Seagull finally caught a uh, bluegill, which was good. Blue, bluegills are good because, yeah, they got a lot of meat on them for being a small fish. So that works out great. He also said that he had about three or four that he had on hooked on. He was using some bait that just it had a simple hook and it wasn't grabbing them. Like he was bringing them in and then he, he would lose them. So that sucked. I got a sucker fish again with that same, same lure. It was, a, it was a lure that I, I only threw it on because we determined that from all the stuff that we were hearing and whatever, white and blue were the colors. And I was like, well, this one's white and blue, but it's just bigger than I would have thought to use. But sure enough, man, it, it did the trick. Unfortunately, it did end up getting stuck. And I ended up even breaking my pole trying oh, to unstuck yeah. it. Cause I was like, Your that's the luck. Pole? Yeah. That was the lucky lure, man. That's the only thing that was really catching fish. I've never had success with lures. I've been fishing. I mean, I started pretty young and I mean, I don't go as regularly as I used to. Cause I do, I do enjoy fishing. Um, but I've always used like 
chicken livers if I want to catch like catfish and then good old earthworms. worms. Yeah. Same thing. Earthworms were the only thing that worked for me last year, but this lure, it was finally doing the trick. I didn't want to lose it. So I broke my pole trying to get it back. I have a buddy. We went fishing out at Clater Lake a year or so back and he was judging my worms, but I was, I was catching them. He, he was not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got another lure in there. Cause I've got like five fish now. We're just doing catch and release, so it, it potentially could have caught the same fish five different times, but I'm not telling. So Pete did end up catching a, a small bass at the end. So that was the final count. Five fish. Five? Five fish feast. Did, uh, However. Did you guys season it? Are you allowed yeah, to bring a seasoning? Yeah, Old Bay. little Old Bay. little Old Bay action. It worked fine. So. We also, while we were at this island, the other thing that was nice was we got to that island at like 3.30. So we had time to set up. We had plenty of daylight to fish. I threw out the uh, the minnow trap again with some catfish bait. Lifted that bad boy up. There's like four minnows in there. Hey, guys, we got minnows if y'all want to, you know, use them for bait. I put it back down. Oh, no. Like an idiot. Not learning from the mistake from earlier. The minnow trap kills you. Came back and they were all gone. Should have brought a five gallon bucket. I did bring a five gallon bucket. Should have used the At five gallon point, bucket dress. I, I brought the five gallon bucket down to the minnow trap. I was not going to make that same mistake. <laughs> I put some fresh catfish bait in there. And then I kept thinking, all right, I got to check that minnow bucket. Yeah. That, that minnow trap fairly regularly because if something's in there, it can get back out. So I'm fishing. I'm fishing. I'm like, let me go check it. I go to check that thing. And there was a crawl dad in there. There was about, it was bigger yeah, than my hand. It was the biggest yeah, we had like, ever seen. They get big. And I got damn excited. Because <laughs> I was like, this thing. We're cooking it? Yeah. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? Yeah. So I get the gallon bucket, the five gallon bucket, put water in it, put that bad boy in there. Lock stocked. I'm excited. I'm like, that's dessert right there. So we, uh, we start gutting the, you know, cutting up the fish and everything. I ended up taking the big bass because that's what we started with. I threw that in the minnow catcher and threw that back in. Never got anything else. Whatever. Starting to get dark. We're cutting up the fish and everything. And uh, cooked the fish. I, don't know, I can't remember if we, we cooked the fish or if we were, I don't know. At some point, I bring the, because I had the bucket kind of like in the shallow part of the river. Yeah. Because I, I figured I wanted to be near the minnow trap to put whatever else in there. And then I brought it back on land at some point. I can't quite remember. And, and then I go to look back because I didn't know if, you know, Pete was there when I pulled the trap up and saw the big crawfish and it was like crazy. And then Siegel saw it in the bucket. So I was like, I don't know if he got a good look. So I was ready to pull it out and see how big this bad boy is. It wasn't in the bucket anymore. Oh, no. It was gone. Oh, no. I don't know what crawfish are capable of doing or how it happened. But that escaped. somehow that guy got out of that damn bucket. Oh no! And we did not get to eat that l huge, huge crawfish. Oh, that would have been so good, though. I know yeah. we were gonna we were gonna boil that bad boy. And when oh, I, man, now when you were a kid, like did you? Because I always talk to the, the wife about this because we go over to the creek in Wildwood and I always see crawfish. Did you like catch them when you were a kid? Like hang out in the creek or the river and like just try and catch them. Cause like we would always do that, and the wife thinks that's nuts. No, not so much. I, I remember trying to catch like minnows and stuff and tadpoles, but not crawfish. Oh, we'd sit there and like we'd just pick them up. I mean, they, you play with it, you look at it, you put it back. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. If you weren't I knew, starving trying to eat it. If I knew what I know now, though. Yeah. And take those home. It's good eats. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know what? You know what makes it even worse was that we didn't even get a photo of it. Because both oh, me and oh. Pete were like in the water fishing, didn't have our phones. Didn't even get a picture of that bad boy. Ah, uh, Now, the one that got away. So you bring Old Bay. How much Old Bay do you bring? Is it the small container? I didn't you bring, bring it. Pete, Pete was the cooker. He had Old Bay. He also had a cast iron skillet. And it was funny. Once we finally 
cooked all that fish up. It it was he didn't let the cast iron spillet heat up first. He sprayed the pam and then immediately started cooking with it. Apparently, you got to heat it up yeah. and then do the pam because it's slow heats. Hindsight, best mistake ever or not mistake because a lot of the bits of fish were stuck to the pan, which sounds bad. Oh, but we were scraping that up. Snacks. And then it was nice. Oh, it was just nice and crispy. crispy. So at the very end, the last few bites where you had the crispy bits were the best. But essentially, we just sat in a circle. All we had was his little like utensil <laughs> thing. So we just like each like took turns, like scooping up a bit, taking a bite, handing it off in the next person. So it was all very equal. It was all fair. Everybody, you know, it was a bite, a bite, a bite, a bite, a bite, a bite, a bite. And that's just how it went. But I did end up, we did, before we set out, we decided we'd make a bet. 30 bucks each, whoever catches the most fish, you know, you take it all. And, you know, I, I got three, Pete and Siegel each got one. Then that night we were trying to figure out, I was trying to look at the weather, no signal. But I guess I have in my weather app, I'm assuming it's the latest from when I did have signal. And it was saying at, at around 7 a.m. we had a 70% chance of rain. And basically like decent 50% chance of rain the whole rest of the yeah. day. So I was like, man, we should probably be prepared for rain overnight. And in the morning, we might want to put some stuff away, whatever. And then for some reason, Pete decided he wanted to go double or nothing. He was like, all right, I, I don't, I, I'm saying it's not going to rain at all. Double or nothing, either, you know, 30 bucks or, or no, 60 bucks or we're even on the bet. I'm like, oh, I'll take that bet because it's a win-win for me. Yeah, I'll either get 60 bucks or I won't get wet. And that's, I'm happy with that. So we shook on it. We actually did something else on it, but I don't want to say it on the radio. Uh, and we... You know, when we readied the camp for rain, which was a wise decision because at about 5.48 a.m., I started hearing a little pitter-patter on my tent. And then for the next two... In the tent, yes! For the, well, no, 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 no. For the next two hours, it was off and on. Like, it was just like, it would rain, stop, rain, stop. And each time after it stopped, I'm like, should I get up and start... Should we start, you know, breaking down camp and doing stuff? But... But yeah, definitely rained, but thankfully it just rained in the morning. So it just got stuff a little wet, but on the, the rest of the float back, it was fine and everything. So it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Weather-wise, it was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty solid. I, I'll take it. So far, it sounds more successful than last year. We didn't catch as many fish. You caught more last year? I thought it was only... We like, caught six last year. Everybody caught six. two fish last year. That's right. This year, it was three, one, and one. And, well, if you want to get technical about all the fish we lost, we lost more fish than yeah. we caught. I, you know what? I'm I lost the minnows five, too. I lost five minnows, a crawdad, and Siegel had, I think it was three or four on his line that he lost as well. So that you, was. If we allow those. But again, it's always a learning experience. It's a learning experience. So, you know, next year we'll be even more prepared and even more better. And I. Still hope, gonna be able hope to God fish. Pete brings that crossbow because, yeah. and honestly, that was that We're was built up so much. If we had normal river circumstance where we could actually, where it wasn't just brown and smooth, yeah, I bet we would have done a lot better this year. But someone needs to get a fish finder. There's an app for that. Yeah, but I don't know how all the app works. You just get a yeah, one of those like because it's sonar. They like. It tracks what's at the bottom, so it'll tell you where the fish are. So if you happen to be like with brown water like that, you oh. end up in an area with a lot of fish. I mean, at that point, you're like committing way too much to the uh, eat what you bring or bring. You only bring beer and, and eat what you catch. Eat what you catch. Yeah, I feel like that would be kind of cheating and not in the spirit of it. No, I think that'd be fine. I think that would be allowed if you had a fish finder. I think that would totally be allowed. But all right, either way. The uh, I do want to credit the Bell's Hearted series because it was indeed the Saturday I started cracking these, and that's when we finally started catching some fish. So, and I think honestly, this was the the cold hearted was what I was drinking when I caught that first one on the rapids. 
I think I was maybe even drinking that experimental one, the black IPA that you were when I caught my second or third fish. But actually, you know, maybe that's that might have been the one I started with that day. Because usually I start with the crafty stuff and then I switch to PBR yeah. when I'm just like, you know, don't want to try and worry about check-ins and stuff and photos and whatnot. But I remember I was a little worried about that one because black IPAs are hit or miss for me. What, what What's your vote? What are you thinking? It's good, an experimental. It'd be a good breakfast beer. That's, I think, I think that is, it's, that actually might have been the first one that I cracked. Damn delicious. Um, I mean, it's not the OG, but few things are. Uh, I would go ahead and give it a four and a half, four, seven, five. It's kind of, I, I think because black IPA, it, it, it's got, it's toasty almost. I don't know. I really like it. It's not as hoppy as you expect from an IPA, but I think a lot of that's it. They focus more on making it the black to be the change of heart. Definitely a good beer. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend everything in the variety pack. Yeah, I, I do too, man. And the cold hearted is probably my second favorite. Well, I don't know. I mean, the bells, the regular two hearted is fantastic, but the hazy is my top. Cause I love hazy's the cold hearted second. The black was all right. It wasn't as bad as I was worried about, I guess. Cause Again, black IPAs, yay or nay for me usually, but that one, that one's a yay for sure. But yeah, the cold hearted is great. Same thing, man. This is good. Four and a half. I'm going to say solid four and a half. If you do come across the Bell's hearted variety pack, definitely give that a shot. And before I wrap up, I do want to also say I got to give another shout out to Debbie Siegel's mom, who had a feast waiting for us. When we got back on Sunday, which was just over the top, ridiculous, like always. So thank you to Debbie. Uh, also, shout out to Lauren for helping us bring in the canoes and, and load them up and everything like that, too. So it was quite the trip. Looking forward to doing it again next year and the year after that and after that. You know, Fish it's an, finder. It's an annual tradition. Fish fish finder. Not plenty. Plenty of fish finder. Is that what it is? And if you want to stay married, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap on Brews Day. Uh, next week, we may or may not have a special guest. We, uh, we'll just, we're either, doing that a lot lately. We're going to drink beer is what we're going to do. You know, people, that's the thing, you know, people reach out, people say, Hey, you know, and it's like, okay, great. And it's like, Oh, no, it's like the crossbow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see either way. I got a funny film. We'll be drinking beer uh, around this time next week. So be sure to tune in for that. Take a quick break and we'll come back with tunes. In fact, it'll be just tunes. JT's joining us right here. That's a wrap for me. I'll be back tomorrow. See ya.